Welcome to Lumi. Today, we're going to be talking about a new concept, orthogonal matrices. This new concept is going to allow us to introduce the concept of orthogonal diagonalization. This is going to be our main goal. And here we have the definition. A squared matrix A is orthogonal if the inverse of A is equal to the transpose of A. Orthogonal matrices form a class of matrices whose inverses can be obtained by transposition. Such matrices occur in a variety of applications and they arise as well as transition matrices when one orthonormal basis is changed to another one. And here we have our first example. Recall that the standard matrix for the counterclockwise rotation of R2 through an angle theta is given by this matrix A. It is a two by two matrix. Its entries are by rows cosine of theta minus sine of theta sine of theta and cosine of theta this matrix is orthogonal indeed if we multiply a transpose times a we should obtain the identity matrix of dimensions two times two let's verify that here we have the transpose matrix of a and we're multiplying that matrix by A itself. All right, after we multiply these two matrices, it is easy to see that we obtain the identity matrix of dimensions two times two. Therefore, A is an orthogonal matrix. At this point, you might be wondering if there is another way to check that a matrix is orthogonal. The answer is yes. Suppose, for example, that we have an n times n matrix A. Then A is orthogonal if and only if the row vectors of A form an orthonormal set in Rn. This is very important. They must form an orthonormal set. This is equivalent to the following the column vectors of A form an orthonormal set in Rn. Again, the columns of A must be orthonormal. Excellent. Any of those conditions characterize that A is orthogonal. Let us explain this previous result in a more concrete way. Suppose we have a matrix A of dimensions three times three. Here, its entries are given as variables. So if we look at them row by row, they are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Suppose this matrix is orthogonal. Then the previous result tells us that the rows of A form an orthonormal basis for R3. That is to say, the set whose vectors are A, B, C, and then D, E, F, and G, H, I form an orthonormal basis for R3. Moreover, if we consider the columns of our matrix A, then the set whose vectors are the columns of A form an orthonormal basis for R3 as well. And here we present the most important properties about orthogonal matrices. The first one says that the inverse of an orthogonal matrix is also an orthogonal matrix. Moreover, if you have two orthogonal matrices and you multiply them, the result is also an orthogonal matrix. Finally, if you have an orthogonal matrix A, 
then its determinant is always one or minus one. And here we have a theorem about orthogonal matrices. This is a key result in orthogonal matrices. So pay attention to this. Our setting is the following. We're working in a vector space with an inner product. That vector space is finite dimensional. You can think of this as an Euclidean space. Now, suppose that we have an orthonormal basis for V and we change that orthonormal basis to another orthonormal basis for V. What we use to do that is a transition matrix, all right? If we change from an orthonormal basis to another orthonormal basis, then that transition matrix is orthogonal. And here we have a specific example. We're changing an orthonormal basis in R2 to another orthonormal basis in R2. The first one is denoted by U1, U2. The second one is U1 prime and U2 prime. We're changing, we're going from the basis whose elements are U1 and U2 to the other basis using this matrix A, that it's a rotation through an angle theta. Here we have the graphical description of what's going on. We start from our original orthonormal basis, U1 and U2, and we change that basis to the new one, U1 prime and U2 prime, all right? That change of basis is done through this matrix A. The theorem tells us that whenever we change from an orthonormal basis to another orthonormal basis, the matrix that is doing that change is orthogonal, as in this case. It is time to recapitulate what we have learned in this video. Today, we saw the definition of orthogonal matrix. We saw an example of orthogonal matrix. Also, we studied some properties of those class of matrices. We also learned a very important theorem about this new notion. What we're going to see next is orthogonal diagonalization. So we're going to apply everything we have learned today to introduce this new important concept. And that's it on orthogonal matrices. Stay tuned and see you next time.